Hello, I'm sharing a robotic sigmoid on a morbidly obese gentleman. A large sigmoid cancer. You can see it there with the tattoo. Um, I have a sponge helping me to keep the small bowel out of the way. It's, this is usually enough for most patients. Um, given his visceral adiposity, I needed an assist port, which I don't usually use. So you see me continuing to adjust my um, elevation of the sigmoid, and now I have my assist helping me. Um, I'm opening over the sacral promontory. I chose to use the vessel sealer instead of the scissors in this case. Uh, the patient was continued on anticoagulation through this surgery. You can see how the assist helps keep that small bowel out of the way. You can tell by the altimeter and the numbers there, the degrees of Trindelenburg and left side up that I have my patient in. And given their size, the assist was crucial. And I'm just going to continue my medial to lateral dissection. I don't have ureteral catheters in for this case as I didn't anticipate that I needed them. And I'm just trying to isolate the inferior mesenteric vessels. You can see it starting to come into view here, clearing all the lymphatic fat around the vessel. The vessel sealer works uh, reasonably well, but for the fine dissection, I still uh, choose to use the scissors. And that's what I'm doing here. And you can see me honing in on the vessel right there. And now I can do a nice high ligation with the vessel sealer. The IMV was uh, very close by. I could have traced this up a little bit higher. Um, given the patient's adiposity, I chose to take it right here. And then we'll just continue our medial to lateral dissection. Protect the ureter with our sponge and then go laterally. I could see my sponge through the peritoneum there laterally, so I chose to make that window so I could connect from up above to down below.
I don't show my full lateral dissection, but it still was not necessary to mobilize the splenic flexure to get reach for the synestomosis after having done the high ligation of the mesentery vessels. Kind of looking for the ureter there. Now we're going to go ahead and take the proximal mesentery coming from just underneath the inferior mesenteric vessel. You can see the cut edge there. Positioning, looking for my proximal margin, aiming for at least six centimeters proximal to the tumor. and marching our way up to that margin, which ended up being about 10 centimeters proximal to the tumor. And here I'm just trying to clean off the bowel wall to make for a more secure stapler. Now we're going to clean off our distal margin. This is right at the rectosigmoid junction where the tenia splay out. We'll check our perfusion with ICG. I like to have the proximal stapler um, in when, uh, while I do this. And now we'll staple distal. Now that the specimen has been separated, I'll do my intracorporeal anastomosis. I choose to do sewn anastomoses for these malignant cases or even benign cases where I will use a stapler to divide the bowel rather than to morselate it. This is my chosen anastomosis. So my outer back row is a 309 inch V lock to suture the two staple lines together. While I'm doing this I'm trying to line up the two um, edges of the bowel so that my enterotomy or my colotomy and my proctotomy are even on both the proximal and distal side.
This is my proctotomy. You can see I've cleared some of the um, rectal fat off the lateral aspect on the near side. It makes it easier to take my stitches with that fat out of the way. And now I'll make my colotomy. With those two wide open um, openings, I'll go ahead and I'll do my inner layer. This is another 309 inch V-lock. I start in the middle and I'm going to sew laterally out and around the left side. I will do ICG again. You can see how the colonic side lights up way before the rectal side, but that they both light up very nicely. I get to place each stitch exactly where I want it when I do a sona anastomosis. coming out and around the far corner. And now I'm doing a transition to a canal to come down the top. And in order to make sure that I didn't close that too much so I couldn't see my near side, I go to my second and my third actually VLUX suture, starting in the middle, sewing around the near corner. This patient was um, morbidly obese, um, significant coronary disease. Um, with this large cancer leading to anemia and presenting with unstable angina. The surgery went well. Discharge was at 48 hours. As we come around the near corner, I'm looking for my opportunity to switch to my canal, which I do right there. And given the reticulated instruments, I'm able to backhand my suturing with great security um, back to my other stitch. I don't like tying my knots um, in the corners, so I decided to bring my far suture back towards the midline. And then we'll tie these two sutures together. And then we'll take the original suture that I used to suture the staple lines together and imbricate the inner outer staple line anteriorly back to the silk suture.
After this is done, we'll go ahead and do our leak test. Most of the time I use it, a 19 millimeter rigid proctoscope for my leak test. I look for an air leak and I drive the scope up and through the anastomosis, which was widely patent. Again, the patient did very well. I don't leave drains for these cases. Um, and I hope you enjoyed.